Welcome back. Today we're going to do the Nancy P. We had a ton of requests to do this fly in the last two weeks. I don't know where it came from. We, we haven't done it because we already did it on one of the videos from uh, that I did with Flyfish TV. So today we're going to do it. The Nancy, as you can see, is a crayfish pattern. Uh, the key to this fly is the way that we set the legs and the fact that it's articulated. Uh, this fly is counted for personally for me my best day of my life ever uh, Johnny and I had a pretty ridiculous day uh, Johnny caught you know a lot because I was rolling most of the time but uh, <clears throat> that's how it always goes but at any rate this fly this fly I, I truly think that if you there's no place in North America Chile New Zealand that you you, you should have this fly I don't care if you have a a high number of crayfish in your water or not. We have virtually no crayfish in the upper Madison. If you get up above the lakes, we've got quite a few. Uh, they, they eat the hell out of this thing. I don't care where you are. And I don't care if you've got a high concentration. They'll still eat a crayfish. They understand it. And the thing about it is, it's the way the legs puff, you know, they kind of, when you, you pull on it and they kind of flare out and it's just like this. It just continuously moves. And it's just a trigger. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna eat it whether they've seen a crayfish in their life or not. First time I ever fished, it was out back. I've never seen a crayfish here, and I had a fish eat it twice. I mean, I hit him and rolled him, and he and it flies still in the water. And he just turned around. He didn't care, and just clobbered the thing. So we're gonna be using. Uh, I'm I'm gonna sh I'm going to show you some variations that I do with my own. And this this one's gonna be this one's the 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 tan version. We do it in. Uh, rust, tan, olive, fire tiger. Yeah, I've done them in white. You can do you can do whatever you want. There's a, just a multitude of. I mean, there's so many different crayfish styles, or you know, uh, species throughout the United States and the world. But so feel free to you know pick some up and look at them and, and just see what they look like yours do. But uh, the originally, I just want to show you on the back hook. Like, this is an articulated fly. So on the back hook here, it's a short shank hook. Um, originally, I used the six or the 2450s. I mean, this flat, this hook here. It's a, it's a short shank. It's it's a really pointy hook. It's a really bitey hook. I hardly ever get one on the back. But I've kind of switched over now. I'm using the the MFC uh, 7050s. Uh, this is that series of hooks that MFC came up with a couple years ago that I've got my name on, and we started just standardizing the hooks. And so. You know, whatever you're, you're comfortable with. I, they're, actually, the first ones were done on egg hooks, as I recall, and the back hook. The front hook I used to use uh, before Dairiki went tits up. I used to use the 710, number four on this one. Uh, or, you know, that, that's up to you. But uh, I'm going to stick with how I've been doing them, how I had them put into the that. We're going to use the, the 7, 7050s. Um, that fly, that hook... We've kind of standardized throughout a lot of my flies just because it's, it's simple. They're both ring eye hooks. The, the legs and the kind of from start to front to back, the legs are going to be the root beer orange tipped legs. These things right here. I dig these things. On the olive ones, they do the same style with the olive and the, the, the two tone. Uh, the body originally was this uh, Estes pearl olive on the tan one. And then somewhere in the middle there, we jumped over to root beer, and I actually really liked the <laughs> crustacean tan. So I mean, it, it's telling you that you can kind of you can wing it. I'm going to use the I'm going to go with the original color with the uh, with the Estes uh, pearl olive, and so it's just just to keep it old school. And then it's pretty simple. And, and after that, we're going to have just some uh, hackle in there. And last week I was doing a, uh, a thing down, a show down at uh, East Rosebud for Rich down there in, in Billings. And I grabbed some of this rust black. And I just really thought it looked cool. This is what I would normally use on the rust color one. Normally I would use the, the brown black. But it was, nice, it was a really cool two-tone. And so I just went for it. So it's whatever... But I, you know, I really dig this stuff because it's it's natu It's not a natural product; it's a barred product, uh, artificially. So you get a ton of really great hackle. It's really cool. It's economical. And so, other than that, we're just going to have some brassy gold to counter rib with, uh, and 
GSP 100. So to get them rolling, we're going to grab this number four. And again, if you, if you wanted to use the 2450s, they're just slightly shorter, not a big deal. Uh, and that's, that would be the original. So on this, on this particular bug, part of the bug, I'm going to start the thread. And we're not going to take this all the way to the back of the hook. We're going to take it, we're going to stop right at the, just shy of where we normally would, about at the point right there of the hook. And we're going to tie in two, count them, two of these rubber legs. So we're just going to fold these over. Uh, we're going to leave these all hanging out there. And tie these in. I just fold them over. This is a really random, uh, just kind of, I'm just going to kind of work those for. Don't really reef on these because you'll cut them. There's not really, they don't, they're, they're back there. We're going to cut them all later. They're going to be about right in here. Uh, and and as I, I'll keep picking this up and showing. You can see the legs back there. I don't know what the hell I put those on for in the first place, but they look cool, so I never took them off. I think they're supposed to be there in their pincher or their antenna is hanging out or something, the legs, I mean, not antenna. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this, and as always, I'm stripping this junk off of here. I just want to get down to the two cores so we can tie it in. One, two, forward. Now we're going to work our way all the way up to the where we're going to do the head. Got to leave a little extra room, as you notice, on the hook. I've got about what would normally be two head lengths probably in there because once we build this body up, and we need to build a little bit of an accentuated taper to this, when we do that, we still have to put these pinchers in. Most important part of the whole fly. I mean, you could, you could screw up a whole bunch of the rest of this. You have to get these legs set right or they're not going to do that swimmy thing that they have to do. And so... We're going to wrap this first wrap, just like always. We are going to yell at me if I block that, Jeremy. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to give it a nice tug and just set that. Make sure nothing spins, nice and tight. Move forward, about fourth or fifth one, set it. And I'm going to come up here. Now I'm going to go back over this up to the halfway point, set it, come back. I'm making a pretty, ex a pretty extreme taper to this because what I'm looking for is a bump there. I just I want something to flare these legs out when they when they ride in the water. You want them to have that little. I'll show this one, this camera here, so you can see. You want them to flare out. I mean, that's what makes the fly do its thing. And so, lots of room here. Better and, and way better, way better to have too much room here than too little. I mean, if, if you've got a quarter of an inch, it's gonna get covered up anyway. That's all right. Really do not rush this head on this thing. Make sure that you've got plenty of room here to tie in. Now I'm gonna use, you can use, I mean, a lot of stuff on this. Gold variant, uh, sand variant, tan. It really, it's just, it just what you like the looks of. I like the hair to be kind of laid down a little bit. I don't like it super super fuzzy like this up here that's getting a little bit fuzzy that's just personal i just you know, i want them to i want them to flare and i want them to move but i don't want them to be so thick that they get kind of too bulky and they, they end up looking like one big pincher and so just as a, a reference and this is completely up to you i'm going to go twice this body length on my pincher so i'm going to set this up here and go like that but remember, you can cut this off if you don't like it or if it's wrapping around or something, you can snip it off. But if you cut them too short to start, you're, you're really, your fly is going to, it's just not going to get the movement you want. So just take the, go in here, measure the length of the, the, the leather, not the, not the hair, because that's going to be sticking out further. And here's another thing on these. Make sure when you look at this, when you look at this hair, or this strip, I mean, this is just a standard zonker strip, by the way. It's not a magnum, it's just a standard. Make sure when you come in here that there's not a bunch of leather sticking back here and that it's got the hair sticks back really nice because that's going to give you that flowing part of it. So, and that one was, that one had at least a quarter inch where there was no hair underneath there. 
So just make sure the hair ends right at the end of that leather. So one, two, I'm going to come in here. When you do this, make sure you don't cut all your hair in the beginning because you, if you cut it, it's the same thing. Now, if you cut the hair off, this is going to be your second leg. And if you look right here, there's very little hair, right? So I got to lip lob that up. So then just come in here, get them pretty close to the same length. Okay. Now I'm going to pull a little bit of that hair off, virtually all of it actually. And now I'm going to look underneath here. I'm going to look at this at the leather side. Make sure it's not really, really, really thick right there. And if you need to, just kind of trim it up just a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here on the back side and I'm going to pinch around that. And I want you to see that it's going around the eye of the hook, like laying over it like that, just a little bit. All right? Got to kind of tie sideways here because we're tying into that camera there too. So now I'm going to pick this off of this one. Double check that there's not a buildup of leather in there. Give it a little tiny trim. And like I said, on this head, on this particular one, we're going to, I don't really care if it's a super clean head and I don't, I kind of like to leave just a little bit of the leather. I'm gonna do it right here so you can see it real easy. And I let it sit right around the eye of the hook. So I come in here and you can see right now, it's kind of, it's going around the eye of the hook. Don't try to cover that up because it's a nice pinch point. It cannot go backwards over that and you're never gonna lose a pincher. Then just come in here and make really sure these things are dead centered and they're going back. And now I want you to take this all the way back so that you can, or you know you're bumped up against that. And you still see a little leather, that's good. Leave that little leather showing there. I mean, as long as you know it's done. And then afterwards, if you want to clean it up with thread, go ahead. I'm not going to. I, I like it sitting there. I'm going to... Jeremy has me extra turned sideways on this thing for that back camera. So I'm trying not to get my shoulder in there. So now you can see they do, they're not going to fold in. They are, they're built up around it. And this is the bigger version. So if, you, you know, if you're doing the smaller hook, just you know, go in there and, and do everything proportionally, just in a smaller size. So now we got that. We're going to go to the bigger hook. And we are going to set. Now, I'm going to show you. This needs, this needs lead eyes. This is a medium. Uh, and again, color is totally up to you. Medium. Uh, if you want to bake them bigger, if you want it to jig more. If you want to jig it more, and I'm going to, I'm going to show you when I get going too. I'm going to show you two styles to do this. I did this originally. I like working with hair. So I did a hair head. If you want to just take that hair head away from this, I was telling a buddy this today. Uh, you know, it really doesn't hurt it. I've done them both ways where if you, you'll see what I'm going to do in a second. But the hair work for me, I just like to work with the hair. So, I, you know, I thought it looked cool. Uh, originally, I thought it might stall it a little bit, just slow it down. But like I said, I've done them both ways. So I'm going to put these lead eyes on, three turns around it, let them turn over. So it's, now it's got two and just come around in the opposite direction and just, just right there, right? You don't have to cinch these down right now. We're going to cinch them down with the, I'm going to go underneath them just a couple. We're going to cinch it down with the wire, our articulation wire. So right now it's still kind of loose, right? And boom. We're not, we're just not trying to really reef them. And as always, come in here and check that you're about where, if you're using a reference, some other pattern. And the other thing I want you to do is go over here and make sure that they're dead center when you look over top of them. You'll get another chance to mess with that. So we're going to take the, we're going to take the back hook. And just to save some time, I didn't mention that. It, I, I mean, I almost always use the same thing. This is Betalon or Serpilon, uh, 19 strand, 17 pound. And I give it a little pull, just 
straighten those out, get it so you got the kink in there, so you it just gives it some place to set. This is one of those flies where I don't really think you would need the beads. Um, well, I know you don't, but put them on originally, so I'm gonna put two beads on here. You don't want this to, if you're not gonna use the beads, do not pull this really tight to your hook. Don't get it really close because it'll, it'll take away some of the, uh, some of the swim of the, of the fly. And these are root beer beads, but they're kind of small ones. So we're gonna, I got two beads on here. I'm just making sure that my, my wire is not twisted. It's not coming over. They're running parallel to one another. Just like that. Come in here, make sure they're just laying nice and parallel. Right here, one on top, one on bottom. You cannot twist. If they twist, just like always, you know, I talk about this on all my flies, on the, on the articulated flies, that if that wire twisted, you know, your back, your tail would be one thing on a dungeon or something like that where it's just, it's marabou and it's all back there. If this one twists, you're kind of not so good because the legs are going to be going the wrong direction. So pay attention to that right now. Just, this is really critical. So we're right on the side. Get back here. And... I'm going to pull this, I'm going to hold on to both of them, I'm going to adjust it just like I always do. I'm going to come in here, and when this bead touches the hook, the front bead touches right here, I want about a bead width between those. So when they tighten up, I've got just exactly how much I want back there. Now, nice tight wraps forward, let it roll over to the top when you get moving. Come up here in front of the eyes, put both pieces through. And by the way, I, this is about a six inch piece uh, of, of wire. And you use, you want, you could get away with a little less. I like to use, you know, I like to be able to pull these back and have, and build, you'll see this taper in a second. Come forward, right tight to the eye. And this is why I, I leave a little bit extra here. So I can get a hold of these. I'm going to take my thumbnail and I'm going to push into it right there. And now I'm in a really, really tight wraps. And I want you to come as close to the eyes on this one as you can, right here. And when you start fighting it, then you come in right behind the eye. And you see I'm pulling towards the front and I'm pulling against the wire to get it to lock underneath those eyes. All right, that's how we're going to, and I'm just pulling against it for a second. I'm gonna come back here to the halfway point, grab Johnny's scissors cut this off right at the halfway point, just so we build the taper. We're just using it, and of course, once you've done that with the, the lead eye, or with the wire, it's no way it's ever gonna come undone, so. Now is when we come in here and we pull that nice and tight. Now we're gonna go underneath the eyes, or the hook, excuse me. We're gonna go underneath the hook and around the eyes, underneath and around, and what we're doing is we're just gonna squeeze that wire down. We're going to squeeze it against the eyes. If you're using 130, you can actually pull this hard enough to cut your lead eyes. So don't, you know, you don't have, it doesn't have to be, I mean, <laughs> bulletproof. All you need it to do is not move. It's not, it, there's not really anything that's going to move those eyes as long as they're set pretty close to how they're supposed to like that. But there, you can see they're pretty, it, it'd be pretty hard to move them. So now, we're going to do a connection cover. We're going to cover up these beads with some hair. And this is where, if you had, I told you earlier, this, this particular gold variant was a little bit fuzzier than I like it. This is a good cover up. This is the best stuff. Just come in here and we're going to take this. And I'm going to cut, I don't know, half, three quarters of an inch of the stuff right there. Okay, I'm going to come in here, and we want this to go, and all we're trying to do is make this look homogenous. We want it to be one piece. We don't want it to be a gap in here, so I'm just going to come in here, grab this, and I'm going to, I just kind of rolled it around to the halfway point, so I'm just trying to cover it up. Come in here, clean that up. Two or three of these at a time, just, you know, if, you, if it's, it's better to do two or three little ones on this than it is to try to use one giant gob of the stuff trying to rush it. If you take, if you find that you don't have enough, just just 
put a little bit more on it, but don't, if you try to tie in this enormous gob of hair, it's gonna get a big bump here and look like crap. So, let me say that. Okay. Come in here, I'm on the side, and I'm gonna pull that back, and I'm just, I just release the tension just a little bit and let it work all the way around the hook. Now we can come in here, come back to this halfway point, and now our connection's nice and clean. My buddy Kurt sent me some, he got sick of watching me fight this, so he sent me some orthop orthodontic uh, dental rubber bands. But my little, little material holder there is getting pretty wore out, so it slides forward. Okay, so we're nice and clubbered up there. Now we're going to take some brassy gold. Pull a little of that off. And I, you notice that I came back up. I'm, I'm always talking about tapers. I, I pulled these wires back and I ended them right here. Now I'm going to come in here. I'm going to lay the wire on top of the hook, right at, right at the point where we did that. And I'm just going to pull it back a little bit. And I'm going to fold it back towards that hair. You see, I'm going to end it right by where the, the bump is. And it's just going to help reduce any obvious bumps in your body. All right. Sorry, dog. Now we're going to basically repeat the back step here. Clean this stuff off. Get a nice clean tie in there. Pinch it, set it in there. Take a double check. Okay, I'm going to stop this just behind the eyes. So we've got, we're going to have to put in rubber legs here. And but that's basically, we're going to put our hackle, our rubber legs. And so leave yourself just a little bit of space back there. Now we're going to come around this one full turn. We're going to stretch it, set it in there. Two, three, four, stretch it. Four, stretch it. Okay, leave, don't go right to the eyes on that one. See, I'm leaving myself a little bit of space right there. I'm going to come back up to the halfway point, stretch, come back in here, and we've built a taper just because tapers are everything. Now, this is, I'm going to do the traditional style, but I want, you, you, on a lot of my flies, like the tits up and bottoms up, uh, I, I've done other things to them. Like I started out one way and then I put on the, the, the woolly tips, is, it put a wool head on it. And this one, I've always done a deer hair head. But I, and like I said earlier, on, on a lot of my own, like I'm gonna speed, I'm in a hurry, I just wanna do some. A lot of the times I'll do how Russ Madden did his circus peanut and I'll just do that right there. And I put a little bit more and I'll leave my hack up here. If you wanted to do that, not deal with this hat, the hair, not learn your craft well you could do that but we're going to do it the way i originally did but honestly if you were to if you were to tie it that way and not and not have the deer hair in there i really don't think it would change the efficiency of this fly it, the fly does its thing how it does it and it's mostly the legs and so that's really the kicker Pardon me, I'm off the coffee. So now we have to put our hackle in, not our rubber legs. So I'm going to kind of lean towards the original colors. But like I said earlier, I really dig this rust black. It's just, it's just got a kind of a cool two-tone in it, uh, just kind of breaking from the original brown. Anybody who cares to yell at MFC about that thing right there? Falling out and being a pain in your hind end. Cut those like this so you can get them out of there. And then they're not attached. Now Jake shoots. 
Mr. MFC there will say that nobody likes them stapled in there. Well, I do. So I'm looking for one that's just going to have enough leg. I, you know, this is partly uh, variegation, partly just breaking it up, and it's, and it's partly supposed to look like legs and just kind of fill the body. I also think when you palmer hackle around these things, it just, it, you know, there's a little bit of, uh, not really air trap, it's water trap, I guess, but it just it gives it that more bulbous look, kind of just, just kind of looks cool and more realistic to me, so. I do a lot of I do a lot of hackle on my flies like that for that probably doesn't even need it. But like always, I'm gonna come in here, grab a feather, and show you that. I came in here, I took the aftershaft and I stripped most of that fuzz off, and I'm gonna leave just a little bit of that fuzz in here for no other reason than I think it looks cool. I, you don't have to do that. I just I, I I've always done it, I leave just a little bit of that fuzzier stuff. Make sure that the hackle's nice and flimsy so you're not gonna, it's not gonna break on you. Now we're gonna come in here, just like always, we're gonna come from right to left. We bumped the hackle against the thread on the bottom. Went from right to left, from left to right. Do not catch the stem. Make sure the hackle's still facing convex side to the right. It's, it's shiny side to the right. Come around here, do not catch it. See, it's, I caught that hackle. I can let this, it's really quite loose right now. I can let it fight me till I get this second wrap, but make sure that that's there. That one I'm kind of getting caught up in the, uh, and then you then you squeeze it. But you see, once it's tight, it's tight. It's, it's facing to the right. And that way when the feather wraps around this fly, it'll marry around it. You don't want them sticking forward and being picky looking. It's supposed to marry around that thing. Okay, just like with the other stuff, with the chenille, we're going to come in here and we're going to grab this first turn and we're going to pull it. Make sure you hold on to things so they don't go flying. And then just, it's not, it's just no real count on this, probably five or six. Whatever it takes to get there. So now we're going to, this is counter wrapping, so we've Left our, we tied our, tied our counter wrapping wire in so that we could come back through this. So tooth gets in it, it's counter wrapped, it's not gonna, it's not gonna undo. So come in here, grab that first turn. So there's your stem of your hackle, just, just get it nicely secured and then just go right through it nice and quick. Boom, you're right there at the front. Give yourself two turns. You can see how it's laying back, how it's supposed to right now. Give yourself two turns and just get in there and wrap over that. Cut that off. And you can see it's laying backwards, not, it's not picking forward. It's just, it's laying backwards nicely. Now we're gonna put three or four legs in. I usually put three in. If you wanna put a fourth one just in case isn't going to hurt anything. I, I noticed on the commercial versions that there were six legs to a side. Uh, I never put that many in. So I'm going to take this. Now, I've talked about this probably more than I should, but this is how you, if you do it like this, if you tie, if you've ever had a problem tying your rubber legs in, ever on anything, I don't care if it's a, a nymph, a dry, or whatever, it's, it's how you set these things in. And we're going to do it the same way we did that hackle in the sense that we're going to do a figure eight and then we're going to do two turns in front of it. And what happens when you do that, when you do that figure eight nice and loose and then you do your pressure wrap in front of it, when you cinch down, it's, it simultaneously collapses around that and it doesn't go really hard, it never cuts it, and it never uh, distorts them. So we're going to come in here, we're going to do one turn over the top See, I don't have any pressure on this at all. Now, all I did was I grabbed that and I sat it in there to make sure they're about the same length. Now I'm coming back behind it and I'm going right dead over the top of it, right there. All right, there's my figure eight. I don't, I don't think you'd be able to see it in there. I might have a little hackle caught in it. So just 
I get a nice figure eight right on top. You can see that they're setting perfectly right now. All right, everything's good with your life and everything, they're perfect, they're laid in there. Now you go one, two right in front and pull straight down. That's all you need. They're, they don't move when you do it this way. They just stay right where they belong. All right, so cinch down, grab your straw. I saw, I mentioned this earlier in a different video. I was watching that kid Bramer. He's pretty good. And he had one of these hair clips. And so instead of the straw deal, he grabbed that, did that. Pretty cool. Works like a champ. I'm just kind of used to the old straw thing. So now we're going to take the last element of this is deer hair. This deer hair, uh, again, you could, you could use any color you want. I like the tan because it's, this is supposed to be the tail that kicks back and forth, but uh, you know, and they're usually kind of lighter colored. If you want to use brownish colored, if you want to mix some colors, that's all cool. I guess this is the original. As always, when we're looking for this hair, we're looking for hair that has a nice clean, I'll show you this way, nice clean break right here, an inch to an inch and a half from the hide up, and you know, a little bit of wrinkle in the hair. Just tells you it's good, good spinning hair. I'm not gonna. Um, this is not, and I, I overemphasize that in a lot of the videos, that you have to have good hair and you have to have uh, you know, the right style of hair because you want this big collar. Well, this isn't really a collar. It's going to be a collar, but it's not the same as like a pectoral fin collar on a sex dungeon or something like that. This is just hair. And so it's just supposed to be... Uh, it, it's supposed to have a little bit of a cover, just kind of look back. Took my comb out to do that seminar. All right, so we're going to clean this all out. And so we're going to have a, I, I'm not going to be looking for a giant collar is what I was getting at. I want it to lay back and kind of, again, I'm trying to make it look like it's one piece a little bit and just laying over it, 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 it you know, be the back of the carpet. And so I was, I'm just, I'm just working with a little bit less hair than I would with a, a, a bigger minnow stack. Take your J-Nick stacker, which is now a swinger stacker, and we're going to take this, and we're going to, this, and this is kind of, I, I usually use about a third of the body length when I tie this in. I'm going to tie this in right, I'm going to kind of bump it and look at it, but again, it's not supposed to be a really big one, big you know, fluff, and I don't want it to come out to the sides either so much. It's basically a, supposed to wrap over the top. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna cut that off nice and clean. I'm gonna do this just like we do every collar. Nice clean cut right here. Spin your thread to your right, because when you spin your thread to your right, it makes it lay back over your hand. When I come up here like this, I'm not gonna fight this. It also rounds your thread a little bit, so it'll be easier to get a hold of it. If you do that the other direction, you spin it to the right. If you do it the other direction, it's going to fall forward to your right, and then it's going to be a real pain trying to get a hold of it. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to lay this right over top. I'm going to catch a really small amount of this hair. I'm going to pull down just a little bit until I can't see it. Put my second one, and I'm in. All right, so there's the top of the collar. Now, because we've got lead eyes, you, I'm going to put a little tiny, because we're going to stack this one. We're going to stack the head instead of spinning it because of the lead eyes. I might spin the front one. I'm going to take a really small amount simply to cover up right here. I'm not going to, I mean, like virtually nothing. I don't, I don't need a lot. I just want a little bit of hair. What I do not want to do is end up covering this bottom. I don't want to cover the... All, all the stuff we've built on the bottom, that reflective value and the light color. And so I'm going to come right there. Now, if you want, you can, it's nice, it's really quick to stack this stuff. You just, you can go right straight forward like this. Come in here. I'm going to do a double. I'm going to show you two ways to do it. Come in here, and we're going to do a stack right there in front. You could do that top and bottom. I'm going to do a single spin. If you wanted to do... If you wanted to do stacking it top bottom, just turn over here like I did there. 
But I've got enough room here, I think I can get away with it. Sometimes, sometimes it'll fight you when you've got lead ice in there. So, but this way we can show a little bit about spinning too. As with all, what you're seeing me do right here is I'm getting this junk out of the hair. You cannot spin deer hair if it has that fur in it right there, like that dubbing looking stuff. That will kill you. So I just take, that's, take a comb it, and this is a, a Dyna King comb holder. This is actually designed to sit in a uh, C-clamp like this and just put your comb in it, whatever you like. I particularly like nylon combs. They kind of, it's funny, they say they, a lot of people like bone combs because they don't get static. Well, I, I like the static. I want it to stay there. All right, and so now I've got a, a pretty good size chunk of hair here. I'm gonna come in here. I don't know why I cut the tips off, but I do. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna go once. And when you spin here, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get this hair spun around the hook with one turn of thread left on it. We're gonna start with two and a half. It's gonna go around once. So, and then this, uh, the second one's just gonna be one that's holding down that we're gonna pull against the, the, the second two and a half turns. So as you see, the thread's going down. You can see the thread still right now. And, and again, when, if, this will fight you. If, if, on, when you got lead eyes, this will fight you. So if it's easier to stack it, just, just stack it. So thread's starting to disappear. What I'm doing is I'm letting the hair kind of work down around the hook. So when I don't see the thread so much, I do a second one right there. Don't let it spin yet, all right? So you can see, I don't, I don't have a lot of pressure on this. I'm letting that hair work all the way around the hook. I don't know if you can see that. Probably went out of focus when I did that. Go back and focus. Okay, good. So I got two turns of thread around it. But what's happening is that the thread's starting to work, or the, excuse me, the hair's starting to work around the hook, right? So I'm going to take this second one, try not to capture any hair, and I leave that, that's the two and a half, and I leave that one on the back. And so what I'm going to do, if you watch the hair, ideally this hair is going to go around one time. And when it goes around one, that means that the thread's squeezed down tight around the hook, and it's really tight around that, the, the shank of the hook. This will have went around once, but what, what it's going to do, it's going to want to fight those lead eyes a little bit because they're stopping it from rolling. So here I've got two and a half. There goes my hair around once. It made one revolution, and it's pretty well locked. I mean, I could bend the hook, and I'm done. So now I'm just going to work my way through this hair, and I'm going I'm to push this back just a little bit. I'm not going to pack this like it was a, you know, a, a decorative pack Cohen fly where you pack the hell out of them with your fugly packer and get it, uh, I mean, when you see the guys like that, those superstar hair tires that, that like Pat that does the frogs and all the other, and the fish and the, all the beautiful lines in it. The way you do that is you just, you've got to pack that hair really hard in there. I'm not trying to do that. This is supposed to be really soft. I don't want to, I'm packing it in just to maybe fill any little gap I had right there just a little bit and to get, get enough space to get my thread around the eye. And that's all I'm trying to do. I'm going to trim this off. Again, it's not supposed, I want it to absorb water, actually. I don't want it to repel water. Okay, so, again, if it, with, the, with the lead eyes, trying to spin them, it'll fight you a little bit. If you, if you do what I showed you, where you get it to let it work around there, do it the one time, it won't fight you too hard. So now, we're going to take and this is part of the reason that we put the, the uh, straw over top of the fly is that, and, and trust me, don't, don't trim this without a straw or the little hair clip that Bramer uses. Uh, you'll lob your legs off. That's the biggest reason. You just don't want to cut your legs off. I'm going to take a double-edged razor. I do this the same way on every fly I do. This, I come under the bottom, and I'm going to pull... Always rest your hand, rest this in your hand, the, the, your right hand if you're right hand tire, right hand in the backs and in your fingertips, and then get a hold of your vise somewhere. Get somewhere where you're just stable. I, I put my hand here and I'm nice and stable. So 
I'm going to come in here, and what I want to do is I want to do one cut above the eyes. Try not to hit the eyes. You know, just take your time, do a nice clean cut. I'm going to come right here. I've never cut myself one of these, by the way. Could happen right now, right in front of you. Could happen. Okay, now we're going to make sure everything's nice and picked out where you want it. And again, this isn't supposed to be a big sculpting head. This is supposed to be the hind end of a crayfish. You know, if you look at a crayfish, they scoop their asses, they, they pull like this and pull themselves along, and the pinchers are hanging out the backside. And it's not a giant sculpting head, it's just a little bitty round tail. And so I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to do that, and just look. That's pretty clean. So we're going to come in here, go right into the collar, just bumping it. Bump right into that collar. You won't, because we set the collar at that long 45, and we aren't trying to use the hair in front of it, you can bump your blade right into it, and you won't cut it because it just kind of pushes it, lays it back. If you get a couple, that's all right anyway. So we're going to come in here, just dip, dip. And then I take mine out of the vise, and I look right over top of them. And so I come in here, and I cut on each side symmetrically. And I have trouble doing that if I don't look. I'm looking straight over the top of the hook. I'm looking right over it, and I'm coming like this in short little boom, boom. Just picking them apart a little pieces at a time. You put all that effort into this thing. Don't go rushing the damn thing and get it and lob one side off all of a sudden. Just take some time, look right over top of it, Round it out. And, and a lot of this is personal. I mean, if, you, if you, you can shape this however you want. If you don't want it, you know, my way is my way. It doesn't mean it's right. And if you ask Johnny, he'd tell you it's not. Probably Jeremy, too. Jeremy has a really cool version. It's kind of a green-blue one, man. They eat the hell out of that thing. So, but and, and again, back to that color thing. You can do it however you want. So I like to leave the eyes... Am I in focus there, Jeremy? Is that good? I like to leave a little bit of the eye showing. They don't have an eye. They have no eye in the ass. I mean, still put it back there. It's kind of cool. And, and by the way, there's another version that I did a long time ago. I, haven't, I just found one of these in the, my fly box uh, last week. And I did it with a cone head. It's pretty cool looking. I mean, I, I must not, I don't know if it fished or not. I don't remember. I just found it in the fly box. So, but it was kind of cool looking. It had a little, little. Uh, it's actually a brown one with a brass cone. So now we just strip that, strip your straw off of there. And so we've got this cute little head there. Now we can get this guy back. I think I already cut my tail or my antenna. So I already cut the antennas off. You can see they're, they're loose. So then we're going to come in here and then leave these legs long. Leave them. They can come back way into the body. I usually just go in and cut them so that they're all broke loose. And you can see now they're all everywhere. You got this small little head. The tails are back here, so they never come together. They're, they're nicely flared. They're back there like that. And that is the original Nancy. So the little dewy thing there. So the tails are all together. Everything's copacetic. Never go together. Lots of legs. They're uh, trying to get that back in there so it'll sit in there. So, at any rate, you got three legs on each side. You got a nice sparse. If you touch these, they should be kind of soft, just kind of so they absorb water, but they still give you a little bit of a profile. Legs are spread, so they're they're always doing this. Every time, every time you pull on it, they'll kind of go together. And the other key to that is when you look at these is that there's always an air gap in between that. That's the big key, is that when you see crayfish, I spent a lot of time watching them, like seven hours observing crayfish. When they do, they hardly ever swim. When they do, the one thing you see is there's always this like cone, and there's always, a, they turn their bodies, and there's always an air gap between their pinchers. I think it's a real telltale to the fish, like these escaping, it's like give them a shot, right? 
But the fly will fish. I don't care where you fish. I don't care if you fish in the lakes. If you're a bass angler, man, put some of these to use. They really dig these. And you don't have to jig it. I generally jig mine like this. But you can strip these pretty fast, and the legs will still do their thing. And it's a real, I mean, this is an impact zone fly. They will come and get it. Hope you liked it. Hope it helped you out.